VFDs are basically a nice green energy savings product. Okay, they link right into your building controls, allow you to shed load and do all sorts of cool things that your utilities might want you to do. Um, and the utilities like them because they can help shed load for your region and help save energy and avoid having to bring on additional capacity. We use a lot of energy in this country and most of that energy is used to move air and water around a building as you all know. Okay, about half the electricity in commercial buildings is just used to move air and water around. So a VFD is a big way to save energy there. So if you look at a typical pump, okay, the life cycle cost of a pump, 90% of it is the energy it consumes. Well, a VFD will cut that in half. How many of you have seen firsthand the energy savings actually being realized by a VFD in your building? Okay, so there's no magic here. You guys see how this has worked. You've seen it in practice. Okay. Um, I think the other big thing that comes in, though, is it has a built-in soft start capability. And because most VFDs are, or motors are oversized to deal with your worst case scenarios, right, your peak loads, a VFD allows you to run that motor um, at the load it needs to be instead of running it at peak load all the time. So those combinations of things are what are going to give you a lot of savings, not only on energy, but also for life of the motor. All right, so what, what is a VFD, a variable frequency drive, an adjustable frequency drive, a variable speed drive, an adjustable speed drive, an inverter? Okay, these are all the different names that are used in the industry. Um, the the technology has been around for, I mean, the technology has been around for probably 40, 45 years. It hasn't been used in HVAC till maybe 25 years. I think somebody mentioned remembering they're the size of a refrigerator. Well, as we know, for all electronics, everything has shrunk and gotten less costly. And so you've gotten to the point where they make sense to put in to save energy. So the energy savings that you get offsets the cost of the product. Now, this maybe wasn't the case 20 years ago, but it is the case today. We'll go through a little bit about what a VFD is kind of behind the scenes. And we're talking about the gray section of these VFDs at the moment. This is the power section of the VFD. So all of them are going to take three-phase power in, and they're going to convert that three-phase power to DC power inside the drive and pulse it out in a simulated AC waveform to the motor. Okay, so that's very standard technology. The savings, basic concept with the savings, again, this is for all VFDs, this is what the technology does, is your speed and your flow are more or less proportional, okay, but the energy consumption is cubed. The relationship is cubed, okay? And so what you're going to get, so this is the only math we have to do today, I think, right? Besides for the only math we're going to do today, if you're running your motor at full speed, 60 hertz, you don't have any savings, right? Because you're running at full speed, it makes sense. <clears throat> but if you're even able to take that oversized motor down to 90%, maybe even still running it at constant volume, let's just say, because you haven't changed out the entire system, but you just don't need to run at full speed most of the year, not 54 hertz output from the VFD, your savings is 27%. Now, how is that? If you cube 90% or 0.9, okay, so we all got to go back to my seventh grade math, right? I got a daughter in seventh grade. 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9, okay, the net result of that is 0.729, okay, so now you're only using 72.9% of the energy you were using. The difference between that and 100% is your savings, right, so 23% savings, 27% savings, okay, if you're at half speed, it's even more, 30 hertz, okay, 0.5 times 0.5, we can do this math in our head, that's 0 0.25, 0 0.25 times 0.5 is 0.125, so you're only using 12% of the electricity. Below this, you're really not going to get any additional savings. Often in pump applications, when you get below half speed, you, you really, these, these formulas break down, this rule of thumb breaks down. Um, if you're pumping up a building and it's, it's open on top and gravity's pushing down, there's a lot of variables that come into play. But generally speaking, in the upper 50%, this is the energy savings and where it's coming from, okay? So we all have seen it. We all. Um, uh, believe it, if you will, the technology has been around a while, so that's what it does. This is just uh, from the UK Department of Trade and Industry, and we partner with our European colleagues on a lot of this, so some of our data and some of the things you'll see have a little bit of a European flavor to it, and it's not really intended to confuse anybody, but this just shows that a lot of VFDs can run at variable speed, okay? So sometimes people ask, can you really slow down that motor? Is that really possible? And um, I think we all would be able to answer that very easily. Yes, of course you can. Okay, so there's different savings methods in buildings, and you'll run into these. I think in the past, before VFDs became mainstream, if you will, there was a lot of different mechanical means that you tried to avoid 
energy, uh, uh, spending the energy, right? Modulating, throttling your pumping systems. You would, in your fan applications, you would use um, variable inlet veins, right? You're varying the pitch of those veins, trying to reduce the flow, okay? But again, a lot of that was flow control as opposed to energy savings. Uh, and the long story short of it is the VFDs end up being by far the, the best way to save energy. I think what we found that's interesting is a v, the VFD industry is almost $8 billion a year. It is larger than building controls. It is larger than almost any other building product. Now, part of the reason for that is they're used all over the place. A lot of them are used in industrial applications, okay, machine tool applications. They're used in water, wastewater treatment applications. They're used in refinery applications. You're pumping fuels around inside of a refinery. Uh, they're used in irrigation systems out in the field. So they're used everywhere, okay? But we're obviously focused on HVAC primarily. And HVAC makes up about 15% of that $7 billion industry, so it's... If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.